The Lord of the Rings, Part Two, by J. R. R. Tolkien. As they journeyed, the sun mounted and grew hot. Each time they climbed a ridge, the breeze seemed to have grown less. A shadow now lay round the edge of sight, beyond which lay the country westward. A dark haze above which the upper sky was like a blue cap, hot and heavy. About midday, they came to a hill whose top was wide and flattened, like a shallow saucer with a green mounded rim. Inside, there was no air stirring. They rode across and looked northwards, where they could glimpse a long, dark line. That's a line of trees, or so my excellent hobbit sight tells me. It, it must mark the road. Some say they were planted in the old days. Splendid! If we make as good going this afternoon as we have this morning, we shall have left the downs before the sun sets. Look at those stones up there. Like teeth they are, sticking out of green gums. Oh, don't look at them. Come down here. We can have lunch in this circle by this big stone here. Oh, yes, I'm hungry, aren't you? Mr. Frodo, sir. Something's happened, sir. It's cold, for one thing. <coughs> oh, and something's happened to the sun. What, what is oh, it? Quick, get the ponies. The sun's setting and there's fog coming down. In fact, there's nothing but fog to be seen all around us. <coughs> Their going was very slow. They went in file to prevent their getting separated. Frodo led with Sam behind, then came Pippin, and then Merry. The valley seemed to stretch on endlessly once they had reached it. Then Frodo thought he saw a hopeful sign. Dark shapes began to loom up on either side through the mist. <coughs> Come on, follow me. This is the gap. At least I think it's the gap in the hills. Instead, the dark patches grew darker, then shrank. And suddenly he saw, towering ominous before him, two huge standing stones. He passed between them almost before he was aware, and even as he did so, darkness seemed to fall round him. Ah! Oh, crap! I've fallen off. Sam, Pip, and Mary, why don't you keep up? Sam, Pip, and Mary, Sam, Pip, and Mary. Where are you? Where, where are you? Here, here. I am waiting for you. No! <laughs> A tall, dark shadow leaned over him. He thought he saw two eyes, very cold, though lit with a pale light which seemed to come from some remote distance. Then a grip, stronger and colder than iron, seized him. The icy touch froze his bones, and he remembered no more. Where am I? It must be inside a barrel. What's that green light round me? I can see the floor. <gasps> oh, no. There are Sam and Pippin and Mary laid out in white beside me. And treasures all piled round us. And they have circlets on their heads and gold chains about their waists. And rings on their fingers. And there are swords by their sides. And what's that? <gasps> A long... A single naked sword lies across their necks. Round 
found a corner stretching into the place where they all lay. A long arm was groping, walking on its fingers towards Sam, who was lying nearest, and towards the hilt of the sword that lay upon him. I must put on the ring. Yes. No, no, I mustn't. I mustn't. Instead, I'll use this short sword. Kneeling, he stooped low over the bodies of his companions and with what strength he had, hewed at the crawling arm. Uh, Take that and that! (laughs) Oh, now what shall I do? Oh, I wish Tom was... Tom! Yes, Tom! Oh, Tom Bombadil... Tom Bombadillo, (laughs) by water, wood, and hill, by reed and willow, come, Tom Bombadil, for our need is near us. Like vanish in the sunlight, shrivel like the cold mist, like the winds go wailing, leave your barrow empty till the world is mended. Oh, Tom, Tom. <laughs> Come, friend Frodo, let's get out to the clean grass. You must help me bear them. Come. <laughs> Together they carried out Mary, Pippin, and Sam. As Frodo left the barrow, he thought he saw a severed hand wriggling still like a wounded spider in a heap of fallen earth. Tom came out with a great load of treasure, things of gold, silver, copper and bronze, and jeweled ornaments. Then he woke the hobbits with an incantation, and to Frodo's great joy the hobbits stirred, stretched their arms, and sprang up. They told of dreaming how they were fighting in ancient, long-forgotten battles and were killed and buried. And finally they took off their ancient clothes and circlets of gold and dressed themselves in spare clothes from their packs. And Tom called up the ponies. Come, ponies! Come, ponies! But there are six ponies now. Yes, that's old fatty lumpkin. He's my four-legged friend. Your ponies got to know him and ran to meet him in the night instead of getting lost like you. I'll have you safe over the borders of my land. I'll give you each a dagger from this hoard, forged many long years ago by the men of Westerness, foes of the Dark Lord. For out east, my knowledge fails. Tom is no master of riders from the Dark Land far beyond his country. Four miles along the road, you'll come upon a village, Bree, under Bree Hill. There you'll find an old inn called the Prancing Pony. The worthy keeper there's Balaam and Butterbur. There you can stay the night. There now, farewell, the hobbits. <laughs>